For real? We love parking at the airport. It's so just convenient not having to Uber. But today we did the one thing you can't do when you park at the airport. Forget where you parked in a giant, massive, probably the biggest parking garage in the whole state. Jason's running around looking for the car. I'm with our stuff. Oh, we took a 6 a.m. flight this morning. I think that's actually the earliest flight I've ever taken. I've taken, you know, 6.30 flights, 6.15 even, but I don't think I've ever actually taken like a six right on the dot flight until today. We both woke up at 4.30 for this and we actually were so good about getting to bed early. We got to bed at nine. So we're both feeling really good. Landed in Seattle, 9 a.m., just totally ready for the day. I expected to just feel awful, but I feel better than most days, to be quite honest with you. I'm gonna have a good day. Today is so exciting. We were six J77. Oh, so we're on the wrong floor. Hi, Kim! Hi, Kim! What is my issue? Okay. The only thing we have is eggs. This is my first meal of the day. The thing is, even though we flew out so early, we still got home around like 11 because our travel routine every time is pick up the car and then we drive to my parents' house and we pick up Cal, which is the opposite direction of Seattle from the airport. So it's like an hour out of the way round trip to pick up Cal. So that just really eats into any time we saved waking up super early. Not that the intent wasn't to save a bunch of time, it was just the cheapest flight and one of the few available. And then we usually go pick up Baylor from Jason's friend's house, which is like more like a 20 minute detour from there. All things considered, it takes us like two hours to get home from the airport, picking up the dogs and all the things, which is totally fine. But I'm basically I'm on a time crunch, even though I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning. You guys are gonna be really confused at what's going on today. Really, really confused at first. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready for the surprise? I just got the keys to my dream condo, dream Seattle living situation, and I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys around a little bit, and then I'll explain what's going on because I'm sure you guys are confused and have questions. I've been keeping this on the down low. Here's the situation. This unit right here, I've seen this unit, same floor plan, everything. Over a year ago, I saw it for the first time and I fell in love with it. And I just could not shake the feeling of how right it felt to live here. And it sucked though, because I, you know, already have a house and now a partner that doesn't want to live in a condo, which is fine. I literally thought about this unit like every day since I saw it, I just completely fell in love with it. I, I thought there was no way, no possibility, you know, I'd ever be able to attain something like this, um, but an opportunity presented itself and it's actually working out. So here is the deal. This is a two bedroom condominium that was for lease. So I've got the keys, but I don't own the unit. Um, I've decided to lease this unit and I'm leasing it with Shelby. I'm not going to live in this unit full time. I'm not putting a bed in here for me. Nothing like that. I just want to be able to use it as kind of like my downtown living room and workspace. See, I love my house, I really do, but I can't get any work done there. And I don't have a space to go and be able to thrive and be productive and be creative. And it's really been hindering me for a long time. I've learned the hard way a couple of times and I won't lie, this even makes me a little nervous. I rented an office space for a year and I think found that I just did not use it. And there was just something about it being an office that didn't feel right. It was too big, it was too commercial, all these things. 
and I've seen other YouTubers do this too where they actually have looked at office spaces and it just doesn't fit the needs of a YouTube creator, I guess, and actually it's a better deal to just rent an apartment or something like that and be able to use that as a workspace. And so I really think this is gonna be so much better. I mean, the views in here are incredible. It gets good light every day, doesn't matter. Rain or shine, you're so high up in the air, it gets good light and it just makes me so happy. I'm so excited for this place. So today we got to get the keys for it. This is my room within the condo. So it's the second bedroom. It's still a pretty good size. It's got floor to ceiling windows. Right here is the closets. So these are California closets. And here's how it looks right here. Ah, I'm so excited. So I am gonna go walk around and find a spot to get food. That's a cool thing about being downtown as well. Like I can just go walk around and find food. And I already have a place in mind and coffee. I need coffee so bad. Pickled onions. Oh, I can't wait to make this fridge just beautiful looking. It's gonna be great. I have always wanted to have panel ready appliances, guys. That's the freezer. That's the dishwasher. It's so cool. And the times I viewed it, it did not have this island. So the island is new. I did not know they were gonna add that. Look at that view. So pretty. And I'm really excited because I was thinking, I was like, shoot, I'm definitely gonna have to buy an island. They have island options at like Crate and Barrel that are super cute, but I would've been worried about spending money buying an island when this is a year lease and when that lease is up, it's like, what am I gonna do with an island? So I'm glad that it's all figured out. <sighs> I'm so excited. This place is awesome. I can't wait to cook. I am going to make so many awesome things in this kitchen. I just love it. I love this place so much. Good morning, happy Monday. I don't know what's going on, but I woke up on the right side of the bed this morning. Naturally woke up feeling amazingly well rested at 7.30 and I've been just having a good morning. I'm so energetic, getting ready for the day. Got my healthy breck. Headed over to the condo now. I got some stuff packed up. It's kind of weird moving some things into another space. It actually works out kind of nice. So since Jason moved in with me, some things we have double of, like double the silverware, double the knife sets, too many mugs, too many wine glasses, things like that. So that works out nicely that I can take some to the condo and like not have to buy a bunch of new stuff. Cause I want to, you know, not buy like seconds of everything and then you know maybe a year later if we weren't to not renew be like what do i do with all this shit shelby is coming on saturday with sam and so it's always a little weird though going somewhere where there's literally no furniture like if i need to edit something i'm i'm sitting on the floor i just so happened to get my favorite furniture brand, just catalogs in the mail. So I thought it'd be helpful to bring them here. Okay, well, these aren't actually that helpful as it turns out. It's a lot of outdoor furniture, which I do not need here. What is going on in Seattle today? We've got a cruise ship docked right there. Nice thing. All right, I brought a vase because there are two things that I've just always fantasized about living in this place. One is going to Pike Place Market and getting fresh flowers and putting them on a vase and just living that Seattle life. Um, the other is 
just making a cup of coffee in here. So I brought some mugs. I brought some wine glasses that successfully did not break. And some cutlery. Brought a bunch of Nespresso pods as well. This lifestyle is really not disappointing. Okay, stopped and got these flowers. Beautiful, amazing, fresh from the market, $10. I grabbed one protein crunch. I grabbed the most beautiful bottle of rosé that I've ever seen in my entire life. Look at this bottle, it's just so pretty. I'm not gonna drink it today. I just wanted to put it in the fridge and be like, I have a panel ready fridge with a pretty bottle of wine in it. Okay. Oh. So freaking pretty with my, uh, my pickled onions. gonna make it a habit to just go to this place it's called the kitchen and market i promise 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 because it is expensive but they have such good ideas they have meal kits and things and like get good ideas learn how to cook a little better measurements I do this for clients in real estate too sometimes what I do is I take a photo of whatever I'm gonna measure and then if you just hit edit you can on the top right go to draw and then I just draw in where the measurements need to go so I'll zoom in a little bit and I'll just kind of like go like that and that one was I'll zoom in so it's easier to draw that one was 89. I'll do this side. Go like that. 93. Just like that. By the way, if any of you watching live in Seattle, want to move to Seattle, and you like this building and you're looking into buying a condo, there are still units for sale in this building. I actually recently sold a unit to a client in this building and I'm super excited for them and they're my neighbors now, which is awesome. If you are interested, if you would like to inquire about pricing and floor plans and all that stuff, you can email me. I'll have my email in the description and I can help you as a buyer broker within this building. Just letting you know. But th this unit though was like for pricing, just to give you kind of an idea, this unit was above a million dollars. They do have one bedrooms though that range anywhere from like the 600,000s up to the 900,000s. It's so different, like the 500,000s, you're on a lower floor, you don't really have a view. Some of the 600,000s are have like a kind of decent view. And then when you get into like the high eights, 900, you can get a really nice one bedroom. And then if you're looking two bedroom, they are starting close to like 1.3, unless those might have sold out now. Um, this one, yeah, was above a million. It was expensive for sure, but I'm not the one that bought it, so. In this corner right here, that's where I would like there to be a dining table because then you can sit at the table and you can enjoy the view of the water right there. And then I think it would look good if in this corner there was a couch. Um, I think it would just look super dreamy to have like a couch right up against floor to ceiling windows. Um, it's clearly like wired for a TV right here because of course, you know, watching TV from the kitchen, I guess is what they were thinking. But, I don't love the idea of that because then it's pulling the entire design to just look this way, which I like this view, but I want the design 
to be looking this way more at the water. So that's what I'm thinking like POV, you look to your left and you've got this really cool city view, but then you can also still see the water over there as well. Like I think a couch would just be really nice over here and just be like a nice little cozy spot. The dining table here, but the thing is if the dining table goes like right here, what do I do with the space just right here? So I don't, I don't know. So I have this rule with myself. I think a lot of people should have it and it's don't have coffee after 5 p.m. Unless you're gonna go out and party or something, then do that I guess. But otherwise don't have coffee after 5 p.m. if you wanna sleep that night. And um, it's five right now and I'm breaking that rule. I wanna have some coffee. I'm leaving to go do a pre-inspection in about 20 minutes. I've never had an inspection so late in the day, 6 p.m. and they usually last a couple hours. And I'm tired, I want some coffee. I'm gonna throw on just a little bit of makeup.